one. Mm, hello, everyone. Welcome to another art cast. Today, it's just going to be a really quick drawing. I'm going to be doing uh, Sheba from uh, The Twisted Adventures of Felix the Cat. Uh, a, I want to say, early 90s or mid 90s cartoon that was a reboot of Felix the Cat with a. Uh, an eye towards the uh, absurd, the surreal, just uh, just a truly bizarre I iteration of the character. Not as bizarre as the movie. Actually, no. No, I take it back. The movie, when you look at the history of Felix the Cat, the movie is actually surprisingly grounded compared to... It's run in the 50s, what with uh, the cylinders and adventures to the moon and, um, you know, all sorts of crazy Silver Age crap. Um, so, yeah, this would have to be probably the most bizarre iteration of Felix the Cat. And uh, I've just, I was going through this phase where I was trying to do one drawing a day again. That didn't pan out, but I did manage to get a couple drawings and... Uh, I just decided to draw uh, Sheba because she was an interesting looking character. She's kind of like this uh, uh, Brooklyn greaser uh, uh, blonde cat as opposed to um, uh, Felix's um, black coat. Um, not Felix's girlfriend. I think he's just... She, they're just really good friends. Uh, she was played by um, Cree Summer, of course. Uh, amazing voice actress. And uh, who's done about every other voice from your childhood. Uh, and this is just um, not really much to say about the process of this. Other than you can see me kind of going through and doing a few quick sketches um, to f settle on a pose. Uh, that one in the middle is actually pretty nice. I probably should go back. I think I have the original file. I should go back and uh, try and maybe dig this up, do something with that. But as you can see, I'm favoring the sketch on the right because I just like the uh, thumbs down uh, thumbs down uh, broad stance kind of. That really sort of embodies her attitude as a character so I just kind of decided to focus on that other than that I the only thing of note of this in terms of its art or you know um, the substance of this the, my process a bit of a word salad uh, hold on I'm gonna take a swig of coffee mm. ah, good foliage um, I did manage to figure out how to make custom spray brushes or scatter brushes, which, um, you get to, um, make a pattern and then that pattern will be, you know, it's a, it's a shape brush, basically the equivalent of, of Photoshop. And I just made circles. And so I can make a head a head brush is what I've I've renamed it. I think it's over in the corner a little bit. No, I have fine tip, mid fine, and then broad. Um, but I basically just called it the head brush because I can then do the character by proportions of how many circles it takes, and I just run the brush along, erase whatever. Uh, circles I need. I can keep half circles, quarter circles, you know, that sort of thing. And then, you know, just sort of gives a, a greater sense of perspective for characters. And that was, I, I it, it was really a pain in the ass to learn how to do that. Um, I will die on the hill that uh, Paint Tool Saya has probably the best pen stabilizer. Um, of any program I've ever used. I, I, I've i used, I've tried to use Clip Studio. I just don't, I don't like that stabilizer. I've tried using uh, Fire Alpaca, which is another great program. If you, if you're looking for free programs, uh, try Fire Alpaca. That's a really nice one. 
uh, Clip Studio. They have sales all the time. You can get like a fully, like a fully decked out, not not the best, not not the top shelf version of uh, Clip Studio, um, but you can get like a really good version of it for like twenty five bucks. They go, it goes on sale every other month because they're really trying to push it as the alternative for Photoshop, which is uh, nickel and diming you everyone to death uh, but unfortunately the paint tool say is not intuitive when it comes to customization especially when it's uh, the brush heads I you have to do something where you have to go in you have to make you have to make the the design first anything just like a plain circle it's got to be black and white and you got to save it as a bitmap but you can't save it as a bitmap in Paint Tool Sea because for some reason it doesn't recognize it as grayscale. When you try to put it in the folder, it will not, it will say, when you put it in the folder and when you try to make a, a brush out of it, it'll say, image is not to grayscale. It's like, oh, okay. And then you try to do whatever you can in Paint Tool Sea. Yeah, you can't. You just can't. You got to, load it into another program like paint or I found another program I don't have my main computer in front of me right now um, but there's a bunch of different programs you got to load it in there and you got to save it as a bitmap um, I think like two 248 or there's a certain format that you have to save it that way, then you load it back into the folder, and then you can use it. Oh, and also you have to clone one of the um, one of the directory files. You just you just pick a file at random, you clone it or copy it, erase the name, and then put the name of the new brush. It's it's really tedious in comparison to Photoshop, which actually has a section that says "Make into a new brush." Um, like any Adobe product, I used to do that all the time when I was uh, when I was working with Illustrator. Um, but again, I stick with Paint Tool Sea because I just I love I love that stabilizer, which actually really doesn't come into play now that I've gotten a a, a screen tablet. Um, I had to dial back the stabilizer a lot because I found it was just way too slow uh, in comparison to what my natural hand movements. Um, so I had to dial that back from like, I, I usually, let's see, what am I working at now? I'm working on an S1 right now. Yeah, that's about right. S1 for sketching. I've, um, this was when I first got the new tablet. I had to then dial it back to like just plain old like 13 uh, just to get the the feel that I wanted. I, I still work um, in the, the, you see that little stabilizer up at the top? It's just like go straight up on the screen and just a look a little bit to the left. It says stabilizer and it says S1. Um, there's, I believe, one, if you drop the little menu down, it says 1 through 15, and then it says S1 through, uh, I think, 7. Yeah, that's right, 7. Yeah, here we go. I'm working with an S5 now in order to do the line work. I used to strictly work with an S5, or S7. Oh, I, I jumped back to it. Oh, no, that was the eraser. Yeah. Um, I used to strictly work with an S seven whenever I was doing my line work because I had a, a little fifty dollar um, uh, Wacom tablet that uh, that I would use and by the way I still use that I am uh, now watching this on an old um, RCA PC uh, PC tablet actually that I uh, found for like 30 bucks at the white dove and it said PC tablet combination. I was like, oh, oh, that's awesome. Because I don't want to get an iPad. I just don't. Um, so I picked this up and I was like, oh, I had so many dreams of just 
because I can I can run any program I want on it because it's like a PC. It's just a very small, not you know, not power heavy PC. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> and uh, I was like, oh gosh, I have I have all these wild wild illusions of just going around and and drawing on the screen and then as soon as i got it it has no touch sensitivity it's it was made too far back ago and by too far back i mean like five years ago that's how much technology just runs away so it doesn't have that it doesn't work with any kind of stylus however it does run lightworks which is fantastic whenever I'm sitting in like a waiting room or I'm, I'm taking a long car trip uh, with somebody and I can just pop this open and I can actually edit a video. Um, I've wanted to do that on a, like, a, like on a tablet or a phone for a long time and this is just great. Um, even now, I'm in quite enjoying this is not a very, this is not a cumbersome little device. I'm recording this right now on it. Uh, but anyway, I still use the stabilizer because I still have that shitty little, um, it's, well, it's, it's shitty now. I, I like created a crevice in it from all the, at the very center of it, I created a little divot, not little. It's actually like, it's flaking the plastics flaking. It's, it's, it's quite substantial. Um, just from like working on it every day for like two years. Uh, but I still use it. I plug it in with this thing and I'm able to draw and it, it works in a pinch. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, uh, since I got the new tablet, I don't, I need to, I need the pen to be actually work faster. I, again, and I went back into Clip Studio, like I said, um, I've tried that stabilizer with all the other programs that are available, and I still just like the feel. And maybe that's just me. Maybe that's literally just like, oh, I'm used to this. If I were forced to use any other program, I probably would, um... But, no, I just like this one. I think it's... I think it's just much better. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Wow, I rambled about artwork more than I, I thought I would. I have some other topics lined up, like... Um, oh, okay, well, I, got, I have some bad news regarding my YouTube channel. Uh, some very serious news here uh i'm afraid i i i i won't be eligible to get that stupid stupid little check mark next to my name i probably never will not that i was i'm a very small in comparison to god i just i look back and i think god if i had only played the youtube game a little better i could be much bigger than i was i put all my eggs into blip and then when I tried to switch over to YouTube, YouTube flagged the shit out of me and I lost monetization for like like two years. Well, I, I lost monetization for one year. And then I just was like, ah, I'm not loading any videos up to YouTube. And then they shut Blip down. And I was like, okay, now I have to load videos up to YouTube. And then they uh, demonetized me again for another half a year, about two years into actually getting some traction. My original, uh, Simpsons video, let's see, my Simpsons video has about, what, two million views? I had more than that on the original upload of that video. And then I had to go over and work with, uh, uh, Fred Nader or whatever, and then get another side channel in order to get monetization on that. And I got, I split all my good videos, my Olaf video and stuff like that. I, YouTube's a mess. And for those who don't know, they've rolled out this stupid little thing where they've taken away a bunch of little check mark next to the names of people. They've taken that away because they want to emulate Twitter, which, oh boy, it, did you pick the right role model? 
by the way, do you know how do you get those little verifications on Twitter? You uh, back when I was again seriously just trying to build the familiar faces brand. Um, back when I was trying to do that, I was like, okay, how do I get that little little blue check mark? It must mean something like you're official. Uh, or, you know, like, I have an official business and I want to, you know, use it. Uh, they said, okay, well, first of all, it's decided based on, you know, the number of followers you have. Uh, which is bullshit. Because what they really wanted was, they said, okay, well, you got to give us your name, your address, your information. I was like, no, no, screw that. You, no, you're not getting any of that. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll get by by not having an official little check mark next to my name. If anyone wanted to actually uh, impersonate me, uh, that's fine. I'll just throw, I'll have my official account. Always a con, always a con. And anyway, YouTube wants to do the same thing. They want to reserve that little stupid check mark next to... uh, I don't know, I guess just networks and TV shows and, like, things that are the, the bigger, bigger producers. It doesn't affect, well, it doesn't affect anything now. It could in the future. Shit. Um, oh, yeah, what a what a dumb, dumb thing. Now, this is... If YouTube wants to do something cool, and I had this idea, and this is actually why I wanted to, what I wanted, the topic I wanted to discuss during this whole thing is, if YouTube really wanted to do something, and it's a, it's a, it's a feature I want, it's, I would like alternative tracks to videos, not for the, for the, how can I put this? Whenever I make these drawing videos, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to, like, I should make an art cast where I talk over various topics and see what I can, see what I can whip up. And that's nice. And I, like I said, I like these because they help me continue to exercise those vocal muscles where I, I have to get up and, like, right now, I'm, I'm stuck. And uh, if I, the more I do it, the more I know I can just, you know, push out that stream of consciousness conversation out. Um, So this is actually better for me. But on the other hand, I kind of just like to upload a video. And I know that other people do these uh, speed drawings and they just do like five minutes, put a music beat, uh, music track under it. Mm, Pardon me. Oh, this coffee. I got um, this new, that they were out of their creamer that we like. So I had to get this all natural delight stuff. And it's kind of, ugh. Um, anyway, I, <laughs> they just put a music track under it and it, they, they get decent numbers. There's this one guy, except he only, he, he, draw, he draws pinups. Um, that's the ones that usually either that or just like truly amazing bits of artwork that probably take weeks and week, uh, you know, like a week to make. Um, but anyway, I would like to give you, the viewer, an option of whether or not you want to listen to my dumb voice or if you could just pop open a little menu on the side and just be like, ah, you know, this is fine. But I just want to listen to this with music. And then you can pop open the alternative track and just have music play while this is going. Also, uh, YouTube does have the option where they change the speed. That would mess up with the, the, I assume, the music because then the music would be playing and it it would sound all weird. Because if you wanted to see this whole process done in about five minutes, you are more than welcome to go over to the you know bottom right, pop that open, and then hit like two times speed, and just uh, see the whole thing get done at a quarter or half the time. 
Oh, there she is. Um, yeah, what a, what a neat design. I like it. It's, it's overdone in comparison to Felix. Um, but still, I like it. It's just that kind of like, uh, it's like beatnik greaser. Um, okay, the hat's, the hat's beatnik. The jacket's greaser. The jacket and the white shirt and the jean combo. Uh, I guess the boots are kind of greaser too. I was going to say that's more like a kind of lumberjack or whatever. Uh, but yeah, just neat character from a cartoon that only lasted like, I don't know, what, one season, two seasons? It was on like, uh, I remember watching this cartoon up in the cabin. We used to have a cabin up in Strawberry and we used to go there and at the, the, you only had like three channels and uh, one of those was, you know, NBC, ABC and then Channel 8. And uh, that's the week that I would watch all the cartoons that I wouldn't watch on the WB or uh, Fox. No, wait. Yeah, they didn't have Fox. We didn't have Fox because I remember missing out on a bunch of Power Rangers. So uh, this is the, that whenever we went up to the cabin, we were going to be watching either a lot of videotapes or um, a lot of cartoons that we had never, we didn't even know were on. Like uh, Felix the Cat and Project Geek and all that stuff. Because uh, God forbid we go outside and enjoy the, uh, the, the, the wonders of nature. Actually, it wasn't. It was just a, it, we, it was a small town. Um, we weren't allowed to go outside of the, outside of the yard. So it was more or less like a vacation for the adults because they would go and they would, oh, you know, most of the time we, of course, went up to a lake and the park and uh, things like that. We swam in a creek. It was nice. Um, but getting back to, I guess, the alternative tracks that I would like implemented on YouTube, because that would also be great for let's say, commentary tracks or alternative languages. Um, it would, of course, I, I assume, be somewhat of a little bit of a extra burden on YouTube because then you'd have more data associated with each video. But I don't, I don't see how that's any different from... Uh, yeah, I guess so. Or maybe it would be a burden on the YouTube... Uh, YouTube uploaders, because then they'd have to be like, okay, track one, track two, and they'd have to upload a video and then upload a track separately. And then from that point, like, l bundle it all together. Hmm. I mean, it could work, but like I said, they'd probably just shift the the uh, responsibility to the uploader. And then if there was a mistake, you can never ever like delete a track or change it. And if there's a mistake, then you'd have to like throw out the whole project. Hmm. That's another thing. Hey, if you really want to verify accounts, then give them the ability to actually freaking make changes to their videos. Uh, after it's uploaded, that's another thing that Blip had that I wish that YouTube did. Because when you were when you were working with Blip, you can change the the video all you wanted. You can upload it, update it, take it down, put it, stick it back up. It was great. YouTube uh, YouTube doesn't do that because YouTube is shit. They don't focus on any of the cool things that would actually make it a better experience. They just kind of stick everyone in the dredges. Anyway, that's Sheba, and uh, that's another one in the can. I, I, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to try and pick these things up again. Anyway, everybody, you have a good one. Stay cool, and uh, I'll see you later.
Bye.